Webflow code components are absolutely insane. I just discovered them and I think it's gonna open up a whole new world of possibilities. So what I wanna do in this video is basically stress test it. So if you're interested in using Webflow code components, this video is basically gonna be like a super quick crash course on everything that you can do with them, which will hopefully give you some ideas of how you can use it in your project. So in this case, what we're gonna do is a weather code component. So you're gonna be able to show the weather using this component. We're gonna make it super customizable in Webflow flow and I'm just going to push the boundaries and see what we can make it do. So first things first, all we have here is a Webflow site. And along with that, I have the documentation from Webflow open. Anything that I have that's a link in this video, go to the link in the description. You can access all of them from there and follow along. So we have this right now. And first things first, it tells us to set up a React project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open a folder on my computer. I'm gonna go to my projects folder and I'm gonna make a new one and I'm just gonna call it like weather site or something. So weather site, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open it up with my terminal. I use ghosty, you can use the default terminal, use whatever you want, doesn't really matter. I don't even know why I use ghosty, it just, I don't know, gets the job done. So, all right, there we go. I am going to go ahead and just run Claude over here. And then I'm gonna start a new tab, just like that. And I'm gonna run these commands. So, run that command. And then after that, I'm gonna do CD to like navigate into that folder. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to run into that. There we go. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the Webflow CLI. Just gonna go ahead and paste that in. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna pop open this thing that I created in GitHub, uh, which is for Claude code. So if you're using Claude code, you can just go ahead and run this command right here. And it's gonna like import this documentation into Claude. If you're not using Claude code, you're using something else. Webflow has this super useful feature here where you can copy it in Markdown for your LLMs. But I made this just to make my life a little bit easier. You can use it too. Link is in the description. Just go ahead and run that. And it's basically going to import all of that documentation in. So now if I go ahead and open my code components folder, we can see there is the Webflow code components guide. And also my Claude MD file has been uploaded so that it has context of that as well. So now I can close this off. I'm gonna go back on over here and uh, we have this Webflow configuration file thing in Claude. I'm just gonna say, can you make my Webflow configuration file? And just to be safe, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and send it so that it knows what to do. That being said, it should already know from the Markdown docs that we, we did. So here it shows add an example component to your library. We are not gonna add an example component. We're gonna make a new component. So let's go ahead and say yes to that. And then once this one is done, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask it to make a weather component. So I'm gonna go ahead now and write up my prompt describing what it is that I want it to make. All right, so I just said, can you make me a Webflow code component for displaying the weather in Rome, Italy? Use an API that doesn't need any sort of API keys. And I'm just gonna set it to plan mode. And I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna say reference the markdown document so that you know how to make Webflow code components. All right, it is in plan mode. I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna go ahead and just plan out its next moves. All right, so there we go. Now it says Rome weather. I'm gonna change it so that it's not Rome after. So I'm just gonna let it know that we're gonna go ahead and add that after. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and run this, see what it does, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, there we go. So it says it created it. That was super fast. And uh, I'm actually gonna go over here and I'm just gonna run npm start because we can develop this locally, take a look at the changes, see if it works, see if it doesn't work. Um, before we actually go ahead and bring it into Webflow. So what I'm gonna do now that I have this open is I'm gonna go ahead and send it here and I'm just gonna ask it to add the component to my page so that I can see it and test it locally. All right, so this actually looks really good right off the bat. There's one issue though that I can see is like the weather thing is off to the left for some reason, it's not centered. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of that send it to Claude code and I'm gonna let it know it's off to the left, can you center it? All right, there we go, so it's done. So now we're gonna to try to import this into Webflow. If that works, great, then we're gonna go through the revision process and make it even better. So over here, there's a command that we can run 
which is in the documentation right here. It's NPX Webflow Library Share. So I'm actually gonna open a new terminal tab and I'm gonna paste that in. So now it's gonna authenticate, it's gonna open here and I'm gonna to have to say which workspace I want it to work in. This page always takes a while, I don't know why, but you only have to do this once, so don't worry about it, get it done and move on. All right, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and select the workspace that I want this to work in and just like that, I can close it off. So now, sure, sure. Cool with me, it's now initializing, create new library, and I'm just gonna call it weather library. There we go, description, fine, I don't need one. Yes, I do trust the code. And just like that, it's gonna run its thing. So I just ran into an error here, and honestly, from my testing, I run into an error here at like every single time that I've tried it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and fix this error. And the way that I fix this error is we can see there's like a long, long, long list of things here. I'm literally going to copy it, go back to Claude code over here and paste it in. I'm gonna let it run. If it fixes it, great. We actually have a video where I tell you how I go about debugging. The link to that is also in the description so you can watch that. It's just following this process. So I'm gonna run this and then I'll get back to you. All right, there we go, it works. So this only took one round of, of updates. So I'm just gonna go ahead, leave Claude code open. And now I'm gonna go back on over here to my Webflow site and I'm going to click libraries. So now we can see that we have available to install, we can see weather library. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click install on that. And now if I go over here, I can see weather. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that in. And as we can see, we now have this component. I can view it live from within Webflow. It is looking absolutely great. That being said, it's got some issues. So we can see in here when it's skinnier, it's centered, but then over here when it's not skinny, it is like all off to the left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, can you center everything in this card? All right, so it says it's done. Now I'm gonna go back over here and I'm again going to run this same command to share it to Webflow. And that is how it goes. So in this case, because it's skinny, you know, it looks the same. Usually you would go ahead and look at the local version, see if it's changed before you update it in Webflow. Um, but I also gave it a really simple request, so I'm not really too worried that it's gonna mess that one up. So it's uploading, it's sharing, there we go. Now I can just go ahead and open this libraries tab again. I can click review changes. It says it's been changed. I'm gonna click accept all updates. And now it's loading the component. And just like that, everything is centered exactly like I want it to. So now if I go over here and I, we can see that there is the city of Rome, I'm gonna want that to be, I can just like write in a city and then it's gonna load it through the API. So I'm gonna ask it to do that. And then this right here, it says we can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit, as you can see, which works beautifully. That being said, I wanna be able to select metric or imperial because if we look at the wind over here, uh, it's in kilometers and I'm assuming that people who know imperial want it to be in miles, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to update those two things. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check out my app page. And as we can see now, it says wind 10 miles per hour on this version, and it says seven kilometers per hour right over there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run the command again to share it to Webflow, and we're gonna see if those props are indeed updated. All right, so I can review changes, I can accept it, and something that it does here, which is really cool, is it shows if there's a potential conflict. So I actually changed my props and let's say I had this set to, you know, Celsius Fahrenheit, this could break that. You know, if I had a bunch of these on my site and they were set using that, I just overrid the props entirely. So, you know, it's warning me and I really like that. In this case, I don't care at all, override all you want. So now we can see this right here looks great. And now I can switch between metric and imperial. And as you can see, it works, it updates the wind. Now let's say I go ahead and change this to Toronto. It is now going to update that. So it is now working in here. However, this looks nice. We have nothing else on our page. Let's say for example, we had like a H1 and this H1 we had set to like, oh, forgive me for not setting a actual class. Actually, I'm just gonna apply it to the entire body, right? So let's say we had our font set to like Oswald or something. Actually, Oswald looks like crap. Let me, let me pick a new one. I don't like Oswald. 
Sorry. Okay. Let's go ahead and select like inconsolata. There we go. Nice little mono font. Okay. So we have this heading and it's like, what's the weather? Let's say. And then I'm actually just going to go ahead and align all of this stuff center. All right. There we go. So here's the thing. This doesn't look like our site. And again, let's go ahead and make a span. And I'm just going to call this variable, for example. And I want to use a certain variable. Let's say blue. For example, we have this variable on our Webflow site and we want this whole thing to match our Webflow site. Um, I want to be able, first of all, I want it to inherit the font. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it know, just inherit the font. And along with that, I wanna be able to add an accent color. So let's say it's gonna change the color of the temperature here. And then we're gonna be able to even use Webflow variables in that. So I'm gonna go over here and write my prompt. All right, so I just said, can we remove the font style so it inherits the font from my Webflow site? Also, can we add a text variable for the accent color? It should change the color of the temperature text. Finally, I want to add a dark mode variable option. I just threw that one in there at the end. Um, so as you can see, these are insanely flexible. We can update them so that they actually fit into our Webflow site. It's not just like some embedded widget component or anything. It's super cool. So I'm going to let it run this, and then we're going to try it out in Webflow. All right, so it has been imported into Webflow. And as you can see right off the bat, it is now inheriting the font. So now, for example, if I go ahead and change the font throughout the site to, let's just say, XO, for example, it updates to XO. So again, I can go in here and change this to Milan, for example. I can change this to Imperial if I want to. We'll stick to metric because metric is better. Okay, anyways. Um, now you can see there's accent color right here and it's preset to three, 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 which is this like gray. So obviously I can go ahead and write like anything I want into here. I can do FFF for example, for white, I can do zero, zero, zero for like straight up black. Um, and along with that, this is the really cool thing. I can go to my variables. I can select, so we pick this blue one, for example. I'm gonna go ahead and just click copy CSS on that. And then I'm gonna go to this accent color and I'm gonna paste that in. And as you can see, it uses the variable. So obviously this is cool for making my text blue, but here's what's really cool about it. This inherits everything. So let's say you have one designer who goes and they build out the site and they use variables and all that. Now another one's come around and they're like, yo, we want a different blue. We want to use this like, you know, crazy kind of teal blue, let's say, just like that. Then you go back, it updates because it is using that variable. And finally, I can set dark mode to true on this. Like, so let me just do a quick recap. We just vibe coded this component, which uses an API. It's fully flexible and fully customizable in Webflow. And there's no limitations. It's just using React. This is honestly one of the coolest things that Webflow has released recently, and I think it is so underrated. I'm gonna be using this a lot for anything, pricing tables, you name it. I'm super excited about this. I hope this video gave you a idea of how amazing this feature is, and I hope you build something with it. So don't forget, links to everything I did are in the description below. See you soon and have a great day.